We now learn how to find values of both cosine and sine for angles which fall within the third quadrant on the unit circle. So that would correspond to any of the points I'm currently highlighting on the unit circle. Now we're going to learn how to do this with some examples. So let's go right ahead and get started. As a first example, we're told without a calculator to find the exact value of both cosine of 210 and sine of 210. On the unit circle, starting from the point with coordinates 1, 0, which remember is always the starting point, 210 degrees is found by moving along the circle anti-clockwise through 210 degrees. So that would be approximately here. So I'll just add that point right here. And I'll go ahead and call that point P. And its radius, OP, and that corresponds to 210 degrees anti-clockwise. Now, when dealing with angles in the third quadrant, we should always make a note of the angle that separates the point P from 180 degrees. So that would be this angle I'm highlighting right now. Well, since to get to point P we went through 210 degrees, that's 30 degrees more than 180. In other words, this angle here is 30 degrees. We also point out that by definition, point P has coordinates that are equal to both cosine of 210 and sine of 210. In other words, the horizontal coordinate of P is cosine of 210, and the vertical coordinate of point P is sine of 210. Okay, now that we've established all of that, we look at the point which is diametrically opposite point P on the unit circle and we define it and call it Q. So that would be this point right here that I'm adding in blue and that I'm calling Q. Since point Q is diametrically opposite point P, we can see that the angle that point Q corresponds to must be equal to the angle that was separating P from 180. So that was 30 degrees. So we can go ahead and add that to the unit circle. That is 30 degrees, which I add here as well, 30 degrees. And by definition, Q has coordinates cosine of 30 and sine of 30. And now we compare the coordinates of these two points, P and Q. Since these two points are diametrically opposite each other on the circle, their coordinates will also be the opposites of each other. That allows us to state that cosine of 210 will be the opposite of cosine of 30 and sine of 210 will be the opposite of sine of 30. So we can write cosine of 210 equals to negative cosine of 30. Similarly, we can write sine of 210 equals to negative sine of 30. But now, cosine of 30 has a well-known value. Indeed, cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So negative cosine over 30 equals to negative the square root of 3 over 2. Similarly, sine of 30 has a well-known value. Indeed, it's equal to 1 half. So negative sine of 30 equals to negative 1 half. And we're done. We've just found the values of both cosine of 210 and sine of 210. Now the method we've just used by looking at the point diametrically opposite point P will always work when we're working in the third quadrant. And in fact, let's look at another example. Again, we're told without a calculator to find the exact value of both cosine of 225 and sine of 225. Starting from the point with coordinates 1, 0, the angle 225 is found by moving anti-clockwise around the unit circle through an angle of 225 degrees. And that would be approximately here. So I'll just add the point right here, and I'll call that point P. As always, I add the radius OP, like so, and that angle corresponds to 225 degrees. Now, by definition, point P has coordinates cosine of 225 and sine of 225. And just as we did previously, we make a note of the angle separating point P from 180 degrees. 
Well, to get to point P, we went through 225 degrees, so that's 45 more than 180. So this angle, which I'm drawing in red, is 45 degrees. We now consider the point Q, which is diametrically opposite point P on the circle. That's this point here that I'm adding in blue. And using the symmetry here, we can see that the angle that Q corresponds to is equal to the angle that separated point P from 180 degrees. That was 45 degrees, which I add right now on this unit circle. 45 degrees, and I'll add it here as well in blue, 45 degrees. And therefore, by definition, point Q has coordinates cosine of 45 and sine of 45. And we now compare the coordinates of both P and Q. Since these two points are diametrically opposite each other on the circle, their coordinates will be the exact opposites of each other. In other words, the vertical coordinate of P will be the opposite of the vertical coordinate of Q, and similarly, the horizontal coordinate of P will be the opposite of the horizontal coordinate of Q. And that allows us to state the following. Cosine of 225 equals to negative cosine of 45. And similarly, sine of 225 equals to negative sine of 45. But the values of cosine of 45 and sine of 45 are both well known. Indeed, cosine of 45 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So negative cosine of 45 equals to negative the square root of 2 over 2. Similarly, sine of 45 also equals to the square root of 2 over 2. So negative sine of 45 equals to negative the square root of 2 over 2. And we're done. We now have the exact values of both cosine of 225 and sine of 225. Let's look at one last example. Once more, we're told without a calculator to find the exact value of cosine of negative 120 and sine of negative 120. Well, starting from the point 1, 0, the point corresponding to an angle of negative 120 is found by moving clockwise around the unit circle through an angle of 120 degrees. And that corresponds to this point here, which I'll just add now. That's this point here, point P. And as always, I draw the radius, OP, like so, and this corresponds to the angle negative 120 degrees. By definition, point P has coordinates cosine of negative 120, and sine of negative 120. And now, as always, we make a note of the angle that separates point P from 180 degrees. Well, since we went through 120 degrees clockwise to get to P, there will be 60 degrees left to get to 180. So I can add that to our unit circle right there. That's 60 degrees. Now that we've done that, we look at the point diametrically opposite point P on the circle, and we define it as a new point, point Q. And using symmetry here, we can see that the angle that point Q corresponds to must equal to the angle separating P from 180 degrees. That was 60 degrees. So we can add that to our diagram right here, that's 60 degrees. And I'll add it in blue as well, 60 degrees. And by definition, point Q has coordinates cosine of 60, and sine of 60. Now that we have both P and Q on our unit circle, we compare their coordinates. Well, since they're both diametrically opposite to each other, their coordinates will also be opposites of each other. Consequently, cosine of negative 120 will equal to the opposite of cosine of 60. And similarly, sine of negative 120 will be equal to the opposite of sine of 60. In writing, that would be cosine of negative 120 equals to negative cosine of 60. Similarly, sine of negative 120 equals to negative sine of 60. And both cosine of 60 and sine of 60 have well-known values. Indeed, cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half.
So negative cosine of 60 is equal to negative 1 half. And sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And so negative sine of 60 is equal to negative the square root of 3 over 2. And there we have it. We now have both cosine of negative 120 and sine of negative 120. And so that's how we can find values of both cosine and sine for angles that fall in the third quadrant. And that's it for this tutorial. There we go everyone, I really hope that helped, and if it did, please hit like on this video, and even subscribe to our channel, because that really does help us. I'll see you soon.